Okay, so we have a patient here that has a need for a 20 gauge catheter for blood transfusion and return. So we can draw labs, figure out what we can get for him. So we're gonna do a pre-assessment before we use the ultra drape. It looks like this is a pretty good spot right here next to this bruise. I'm gonna use that as my marker. As I go forward, pretty straight line this way. Now, if I go straight in the arm, look what happens. If I go up the arm, parallel to the arm, you're gonna see that vein shifting to the left. That means the vein is going this way. So I'm gonna angle the probe just a little bit to the left. So instead of going this way, the vein is actually going a little bit this way. And that way when I insert with my needle, I'm gonna get a straight vector of the vein itself. We're gonna look at the valves to make sure we're not gonna occlude. I'm not overly concerned, but it'll be a good way to, good reason to ass assess, good excuse to assess. The patient does not need this for longevity, just needs a quick, transfusion but here we go a possible valve here at that bulbular structure I'm going to try to see if I can find the leaflets maybe not uh, non bulbular it's pretty linear there's a leaf so we got a valve right about there How did you get into this? Well, I was in the ER and I started poking a bunch of people and I got really good at it. And so they called me to start placing more lines and started becoming the go-to guy to put in lines. And I enjoyed getting it in one stick. So I don't have to poke the patients a bunch of times. So keeping the patients happy and keeping other nurses happy, I got a high off of that. So I just got better and better over time. Made it a goal to be the best. Almost there. So this is center up with where the valve is. You can see the leaflet at the bottom. So we got a leaflet at the bottom here. I'm gonna mark that. So this is valve number one. I'm gonna keep going up. We got valve number two maybe. Let's see. Let's see. I wonder if they come in twos. Naturally. Yeah, that's definitely number two right there. So we're gonna center it up here. And that is also, yeah, you can see the two leaflets right there. On the bottom there. Yeah, two leaflets, so the valves are very close to each other. So we may need to actually insert and draw blood from further up so we don't get obstructed at that site. Which I'm kind of glad I looked. Is that a valve? Is that bulbular? Yes, there's a leaflet right there. Another valve here. I don't think we're gonna be able to avoid the valves here. I'm looking. Make it up. Let's just see it. Aren't you glad it doesn't bother me to be stuck? Well, aren't you glad that I only need one try? You're a big blur, aren't you? Of course. And then another one over here. That's another valve. Okay. So here's our. Here are all our valves, two, three. All right, so here's a diagram of what we're trying to do. I want you to pay attention to these junctions here where the veins are meeting together or they're leaving. So conjoining junctions where they meet together or bifurcation junctions where they leave and separate into different vessels. I was hoping to get it to terminate right before the conjoining of these two veins here. So right before it joins, I tried to get my catheter tip to stop and exit 
right before that conjoining junction. And the reason why that's so important is we are trying to allow the flow from the blood, from the collateral branch to dilute the medication. So by the time it gets up to this junction right here, it'll be diluted by the blood. And it looks like there's actually another junction joining right here like that. And so you'll have less of an irritative effect because the blood has diluted this medication. Not only that, but when you get up to here, you have all this extra flow rate that's decreasing the irritation from the medication. There's a bifurcation here and a conjoining here. If I settle the catheter tip, right about here. This is the lower lock hub, and this is our catheter point. If our catheter ended right there, or even let's say right about here at that point, the blood flow from, let's say the medication is going in from here, and then it's going to split off between here. You have all this collateral flow diluting that medication till it has very little effect on the veins. And if you look carefully, I know this is just a diagram, but look at how much of the medication is actually irritating directly into the vein. It's a very small amount and everything else around here is being diluted by the blood. Now let's see what happens if we put it in a suboptimal location. So if we, so let's say we ended the catheter tip right about here. You would think that this gigantic area and diameter of the vein would be great hemodilution. It probably is to this patient or to this person. But remember, our patients don't have muscles this big. So, I mean, think about it. If we want to scale that, if we put a 20 gauge catheter, it's probably relatively more like this to most of our sick patients. And then you really don't have a lot of blood flow flowing around that catheter because it was choked up by the diameter of the catheter. So this is the diameter of the catheter, and this is the diameter of the vein. So not that much different. And so your catheter to vein ratio is a lot higher. And so that mitigates all this work and all this potential hemodilution now gets choked up and mitigated. And there is traffic jam here, which doesn't allow for hemodilution except from this collateral flow. So this collateral vein is what's helping to dilute it, but you're missing out on all these other potential hemodilution pathways. So it's better to put the catheter further behind or further distal so that you get a lot more collateral flow to really dilute that medication. So if I want to end here, I need to insert at about So I'll have to insert at this point. That'll be my insertion, level of insertion here. That way we make sure the tip terminates post first. Eh, it's probably closer up here. That second one up there. Yeah, that one will get us past the valve here these two valves, and it'll get us right before that valve. So we're going to try to settle the catheter here, right in between. Where are you going to put the body in? Hmm? I'm going to. I haven't done it yet. That's what I'm Not yet. So what's great about these ultra drapes, you want to pull, see that number one? Uh -huh. That number one, it tells you step by step, pull here first, then pull here, and then pull here, so. All right, so you guys had a couple questions on this. I'm gonna pull this tab first. Num tab number one. 
pull that and I'm going to fold it and apply it to my insertion where I'm going to insert, which is like right about here. There we go. Now I apply the gel so you can see through. And I'm going to hold the tab with the probe. There we go. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Ready for the poke. Here we go, three. Oops. Let me get ready. All right, and three, two, one. This is my needle here. I'm gonna go at a gentle, uh, a little bit of a steep slope here. For this insertion, my angle of attack was way higher than I'd like it to be, but I had to compensate for the ultra drape. One of the problems I have with this device is that it only gives me a small window of view with the ultrasound. The border is great for securement, but it makes it impossible for the low angle insertion using ultrasound. Applying Pythagorean theorem, we know that the lower angle insertions, we need more length to get to the main. And of course, we know that the lower attack angle also increases dwell times of the catheter. Now, if you're not worried about dwell time and just need access for short-term intravenous medications, the UltraDrape is a fantastic tool to help cut down on your procedure time without compromising aseptic no-touch technique. I'm talking to you ER people, especially the ones that don't like to use that probe cover. So I'm in the vein now. Thread a little bit more. Okay, now I lost visual because of the border. Okay, don't have any gauze, unfortunately. But luckily, these are sterile gloves. Boom, great blood return. Unfortunately, we can't assess the tip of the catheter with this. So you have to commit and cross your fingers. There's a catheter laying down. Now look at the attack angle of that catheter. How do you not expect any damage or any irritation to the veins when you're power flushing at that steep of an angle directly to the veins itself? This is why your flushing technique matters, especially with these compromised insertions. Luckily, this patient only needed one unit of blood transfusion and we were going to take out the IV immediately after. Now, if she needed that IV for more than four or five days, she may ended up needing another reinsertion. Looks like right before, you can see that catheter at the very very right side of the screen. And great blood return. No, no venous compression. It's got good flow at that point. There it is. All right, this is really interesting. Notice how the veins were decompressing when the vacutainers were drawing blood right here. Do you see how much the veins were collapsing from the blood draw? Not only that, but did you notice how I adjusted the angle of the catheter for the blood to flow more efficiently into the tube? Imagine if the veins were even smaller around the catheter or the catheter tip. If the CVR was higher, the veins would have completely collapsed with this patient. This is how much negative pressure these vials exert on the veins. And this is why your catheter to vein ratio and your angle of attack matters when trying to draw blood. Of course, we got blood return. We got flush. Let's see if we can assess the flush. There it is right there. Not up against the valve. Perfect. Look at that. This is gentle. Look how much turbulence we're creating just from that little bit of gentle flush. That's all we're doing. Look how much how much turbulence we're creating. So you want to be careful about how hard you flush. All right. So remember the one, two, three tabs. That's tab one that we did earlier. This is tab two. And look. Everyone was worried about the mel the gel mess. Oh, look at that. Where's my mess now? Where's your mess now? I don't have a mess. No mess, exactly. It would be furry. So. If I had a mess. Try to main maintain 
at that look at that uh, extension tubing. Beautiful. Look at that. Tell me your name again. The vascular guy. What the vascular guy? That's right. Cute. <laughs> Thanks. I thought so. All right, that's it. Was that better or worse than you expected? I didn't expect any of it. Did it hurt a lot? No. No? That's good.